Hey guys, in this short video, I want to talk to you about an uncommonly talked about causative factor in erectile dysfunction, which is elevated prolactin levels. According to statistics, over 50% of men are experiencing some form of erectile dysfunction. And if you're over the age of 40, those numbers go up to 70%. And with a large portion of our viewership falling in this age range, it's no wonder that erectile dysfunction is such a popular topic for our channel. And we talk a lot about it here on the channel. We have a couple of different videos and we dive into all sorts of different causative factors and natural things you can do to start correcting the issue. But one of the things I haven't touched on just yet, which is likely a sole contributing factor, if not the number one cause of erectile dysfunction, is the correlation between elevated prolactin levels and hypogonadism. So if we take a quick look at this study here that I'll be linking beneath this video so you can dive into it and read all about it, it's been observed that men with erectile dysfunction tend to test for elevated prolactin levels and hypogonadism. And in short, hypogonadism refers to the suboptimal functioning of the gonads or testes. So in endocrinology, hypogonadism is often considered to be the number one cause of erectile dysfunction. It's basically always present in any case of erectile dysfunction for a very simple reason. And the association of elevated prolactin levels comes to me at no surprise, given its interference on the function of the whole gonad organ system, if you will. So if you're not aware, basically one of the key factors in having and maintaining a healthy rigid erection is having optimal levels of testosterone. Testosterone has a very profound effect on the whole functioning of the male reproductive system and the sexual organs. And it plays a major role, not just in the development and functioning of healthy sperm, but also the functioning of the gonads and the penis as organs. So typically low levels of testosterone are always implicated in erectile dysfunction. And one of the major contributing factors to the low testosterone is often elevated prolactin. So as I mentioned really briefly, prolactin does a couple of things in regards to its contribution to erectile dysfunction. First and foremost, it can directly contribute to hypogonadism by interfering with the production of gonadotropin hormones. So sex steroids like testosterone that you need to produce an erection and to be fertile as a man. So generally speaking, prolactin suppresses testosterone. It also has many other negative effects. It tends to be elevated with estrogen. So estrogen stimulates the pituitary to secrete prolactin, and both estrogen and prolactin are elevated under stressors of all types. So exercise stress and even psychological stress can stimulate both estrogen and prolactin and in this way suppress testosterone and the functioning of the gonads. And this can directly lead to erectile dysfunction. And if we quickly look back at the study, it even states that although the decrease of serum testosterone level is considered to be the major cause of erectile dysfunction, they also suspect an end organ effect of prolactin on the penis. So it goes on to say that surprisingly, not everyone with hyperprolactinemia, so elevated prolactin, has low testosterone or complains of erectile dysfunction. However, when serum prolactin levels are corrected with elevated prolactin levels and low testosterone levels, the testosterone levels usually return to a normal range and erectile dysfunction is usually corrected. So in other words, they found that even if a person has high prolactin levels and they're not necessarily complaining about erectile dysfunction or they're not testing necessarily for low testosterone, which is probably an inaccurate number anyways, what they found is that just giving this person testosterone does not correct the erectile dysfunction. The erectile dysfunction is only ever corrected or resolved when the high prolactin is fixed, showing that prolactin not only does interfere with the gonadotropin hormones and it will oppose testosterone to some degree, that the elevated prolactin can directly negatively affect the function of the penis. And through my understanding of prolactin's effects in the body, what could be occurring over the long term through chronically elevated levels of prolactin is a certain level of calcification in the small capillaries and vascular system throughout the penis. So prolactin, as I talk about pretty much every time I mention it, 
it can disrupt or derange calcium metabolism. It can start to soften the bones in the teeth and start to harden the soft tissue. So the capillary, even the smooth muscle in the penis can become rigid. So in summary, Hyperprolactinemia or chronically elevated levels of prolactin are always implicated in erectile dysfunction. Even if that person is testing for normal levels of testosterone, there is at least elevated levels of prolactin, which shows us that there's also hypogonadism typically. So even if you're not testing for low testosterone, yet you're experiencing erectile dysfunction, I would highly recommend having your prolactin levels checked. So the takeaway of this video is that if you're a male suffering from erectile dysfunction, and you're testing for normal levels of testosterone, and you're doing everything to try to increase circulation or even worse, boost nitric oxide, and nothing's really working, it's likely because the overlooked factor is the elevated prolactin, which is something that most doctors will probably never test for or check for in regards to erectile dysfunction or most health conditions unless you ask for it. So my piece of advice here would be to start to take proactive steps to lower the prolactin. Remember, it's a stress substance, it rises under stress, it increases in response to estrogen. So if you're male and you drink a lot of beer, very estrogenic, the hops are estrogenic, as well as the estradiol from the yeast and the alcohol in general. If you're a male that's consuming tons of grains, polyunsaturated fats, which you'll find in your typical processed junk foods, eating a lot of bread, pasta, etc., and you're dealing with erectile dysfunction, all these things are gonna to contribute to increased levels of estrogen, and that estrogen will stimulate prolactin. So for practical tips, we have a couple of different videos here on the channel as to how to lower prolactin. Definitely watch these other videos that you'll find here, but a couple of really good tips for lowering prolactin. First and foremost, you're gonna to wanna to take proactive steps to lower estrogen. So also be sure to watch our other videos on how to lower estrogen. In addition to that, some of the best antagonists to prolactin levels are going to be first and foremost, dopamine. Dopamine is the natural regulator of prolactin. So typically if you have a dopamine deficiency, prolactin levels will rise. So in addition to watching the videos on how to lower prolactin, you know, taking herbs like black ant for the zinc and KSM 66 ashwagandha, as we recently talked about, uh, taking proactive steps to lower estrogen, the anti-estrogen herbs, and removing the estrogens from your diet and life. You're going to also want to take a look at this video, and probably this video, for tips on boosting dopamine. Anything that increases dopamine will naturally regulate and oppose excess levels of prolactin from being produced. But other tips for lowering prolactin outside of all of those videos, which are fantastic resources. Some very simple things, two very powerful simple things. First and foremost, sunlight. Get as much sunlight as you can. It's one of the best antagonists or inhibitors to prolactin. Number two, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you get enough dietary calcium, which is something that many people don't get enough today because of bad science around calcium. You know, people that under don't understand calcium metabolism blame the calcification of the hard tissues and of the body on dietary calcium when that's not the case at all. Uh, that's a result of actually prolactin and parathyroid. So you know, a lot of the times people are not consuming enough dairy or enough calcium rich products because they don't want to consume dairy because, you know, they're trying to avoid commercial dairy. So all the more reason to get your hands on good quality dairy. If you can't find raw Jersey dairy, then stick to sheep and goat milk dairy and cheese for a good source of calcium. Otherwise, you're going to have to consume eggshell calcium or powder or cook a lot of leafy greens and hope that you don't get digestive upset. So there you have it. One overlooked cause of erectile dysfunction. If again, you're a guy dealing with erectile dysfunction and nothing to this point necessarily working, here's one more angle to come at from. Again, it's basically the number one cause of erectile dysfunction, hyperprolactinemia associated with the hypogonadism. So if you can successfully bring down your prolactin levels, you'll probably experience almost immediate relief. Otherwise, that does bring this video to a close. If you've enjoyed it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't yet already. 
Be sure to share this video with anybody that is in need and that could find this information useful. There are too many men out there with erectile dysfunction who know nothing about prolactin and it's probably the number one thing that they should know about. So pass this video around to anybody that could find it useful. Also be sure to check out that study if you want to learn more. And as always for additional information, resources, and help, we have a blog, an online wellness academy, and an online tonic herb shop, all which you can find in the description box below.